everybody this is Pat Windrow again at the cable easel live for a change and ready to take phone calls if you want to talk about anything at all that I'm doing or that maybe you're doing and uh, this is a program which is devoted to painting from life and when it's a scene the closest that we can get to life is to use a monitor and a tape a videotape so the wonderful electronic progress that has been made enables me to sit here in the studio uh, and uh, talk to you directly and work from a moving picture which is uh, which is somewhat like being out there in the field this is a um, this is a sunset scene something that everybody wants to paint and of course nobody's going to get out there at sunset because it uh, light doesn't last long enough and so the best thing to do is to take the camcorder and to go out and shoot the scene and then work at your leisure at home here is the way one does it i'm hoping i can pull this off and get this across to you as simply as possible and I'm going to be working naturally with a combination of a palette knife and a brush to get the effects that uh, can be achieved probably only with oils I mean watercolor is fine but it's an entirely different game when you do it with oils now composition is one of the problems that people are a little bit intimidated by and so let's talk a minute about composition this one has a very little amount of sky the sky is well it's approximately well let's say it's less than a third occupying less than a third of the space and so the first thing you do is to put the horizon line in and because we live on the planet and we are only in one place at a time not up in the sky at 30,000 feet in an airplane this the horizon appears to be straight it actually is curved but for now from here from this vantage point it is straight then there's a two-line composition it's obvious this is a composition already there's a plan now down at the bottom in the lower third of the canvas there is the ever uh, ever enjoyable and necessary a diagonal line for interest in the composition uh, there is another diagonal line it does this that makes it even more interesting slightly more mysterious and then that ends over here someplace so we have really a two-line composition somehow it is obvious that this is a shoreline it can't really be anything else and here uh, in the semi foreground is another diagonal with something equally as mysterious we don't quite know what it is but it occupies about this much space it's obviously some kind of a sunken piling arrangement in this wonderful environment which we live in called Long Island the only final line in this composition is Four, this is this is actually three lines because you could con call this a continuous line and the fourth one is the setting sun and so with a single with a single uh, line there you have a four line composition certainly should not be too difficult to be able to decipher what is happening here the whole interest in this now that the composition has been established and the pattern has been drawn now the point is to get the colors right and obviously a sunset is a study in color many times a study in lack of color but in this particular one because of this time of year it's the fall and because it's the south shore this is right off Heckscher State Parkway so what you're looking at is the Atlantic Ocean looking south no, west, sorry, <laughs> for the sun does not set in the south uh, in looking west and um, 
It's a rather remarkable uh, color scheme. I think that the only way that it can really uh, be um, acceptable is if tremendous attention is paid to the color. So, with a very, very simple layout, on a canvas which measures 16 by 20 with an inch on either, on, on all the way around, for carrying purposes and for later for matting, as you can see the paintings on the walls have brown mats around them, um, I'm going to start, as I do usually, uh, by spreading the uh, colors on the canvas no, w without using a palette. I've explained this before, that when you're out there in the wild, you want to try and keep your, uh, your equipment down to a minimum, especially if you have to carry it everywhere. And so I use my canvas uh, a great deal of the time as my palette. Uh, the mysterious quality of the color scheme here is the fact that the sky, instead of being blue or dark blue, happens to be half and half. It happens to be half sort of apricot color, which I'm mixing with a spectrum yellow right from the tube, some spectrum orange, and some of my quick drying Grumbacher MG quick drying white. I'm putting this on rapidly with the palette knife uh, and I'm going to blend the two later with a brush. Uh, I love palette knife techniques and most people uh, are drawn to them as well, but there comes a time I think that you can mix the two. And I'm obviously and very definitely going to mix the two, um, the two techniques this evening with this particular piece. Don't forget, if you want to call, this is the time to do it so that we can talk together. Otherwise, I won't be back until the end of December because I'm live only once a month. On the last Tuesday of every month, you'll find me uh, jabbering away at you with endless conversation about color and paint, and maybe once in a while we can have a conversation uh, on, uh, uh, personally. So here we have a rather wonderful uh, color scheme. The brilliant orange uh, of the, uh, the top part of the sky. How it ever happens, I would never even try to guess. All I know is that when it happens, it is uh, seductive and very mysterious and very uh, inspiring. And certainly at this time of year, on Long Island, surrounded on both, on all sides with water, uh, there are atmospheric conditions that make for some pretty amazing color schemes. So you can have the West uh, with all its wonderful sunsets, but this one is very very, very uh, special here on this island because of the kind of atmosphere that we have. So we have here, and this will all blend in a little bit later. I'm just putting the basic colors on. And now from that, we're going to go to a really deep and very um, rich bluish mauve gray something or other. Uh, and I'm going to start off with um, the basic uh, white and some ultramarine blue, and that has to be toned. So I'm, gonna, I'm mixing all this here right in front of your eyes so that you can really get some sort of a feeling about how you do this. Uh, uh, words are okay, but the demonstration is the vital part of it. Uh, I'm going to need some uh, purple in there, uh, maybe not that much, but as you can see with these wonderful close-ups and the ability to get this close to it, uh, that the, uh, the uh, manner in which I do this becomes uh, much clearer than if it were uh, than if I it were just um, reading about it in a book. So that's why these these programs I think are quite important because of the the real instantaneous visual demonstration of how to do this. Uh, this is, of course, my technique. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is uh, the only technique. It is just one. And uh, the reason that I mix so often is because I never like to see the so-called accidental um, uh, streaks that take place when you put um, color on with a palette knife. I don't want to see the streaks. The only time that I see streaks is when they are purposely done for a, a surface effect or a tactile effect of texture. So um, when I put it on, I want to make sure that it is all absolutely properly mixed. Because to me, the sign of the amateur is when the, uh, when the colors are relying upon accidental streaking. And that I don't find that particularly attractive, nor is it my style. So we have here two colors. Now they must be blended. That is done, obviously, with a brush. I'm going to use a rather soft, rounded brush. 
it's uh, sable, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to attempt to um, make the blend. And this is probably the um, uh, the uh, the more important phase of working with oils. Uh, uh, with acrylics, you could not do this. There would be no way to be able to blend these two together. It is it is the uh, texture and also the properties of oil that allow you to to do these blends. And uh, as I said earlier, the, the point of this painting is the uh, colors that run into one another and blend the way they do. So, uh, and it doesn't happen very often. And when it does happen and you happen to be out there, there you are stuck without your paints. And even if you had paints out there, it would be uh, impossible to start a canvas because the light changes too fast. If anybody has watched a uh, sunset, they know that within a matter of 30 seconds, it's over. You count, uh, you count down from 30, 29, 28, and next thing you know at one, the sun has disappeared and, uh, uh, totally. So here, um, you can see from the way I'm blending these two together, that it's because the oil is, um, it, it is the, has the properties that it has, that you can, in fact, do these blends. Uh, one of the more intriguing things to me about painting in oils is the, uh, is the blending. And uh, whether it's a sky, or it's the shadow of an apple, or if it's the, uh, or if it's this texture on, uh, on a human being's cheek, uh, I am interested in the uh, uh, smooth and uh, very uh, mysterious blending of colors. So when you, when you get these two together, um, you have, you've, you've accomplished already the effect that you're after. I'm after a particular effect. And now, there was a, a wonderful painter uh, in the 19th century called uh, J. M. W. Turner, and he uh, was a painter of atmosphere and effects and dramatic conditions. He painted things like the fire, the Great Fire of London. He painted sunrises, sunsets, storms, uh, uh, ice storms, and so on. And his ability to do sunsets and sunrises was absolutely remarkable. So, if anybody is really interested further in seeing the other uh, masters, <laughs> uh, no, see a true master. Uh, J.M.W. Turner was the one uh, that you really probably ought to pursue. Now, 348-6800 is the number in case you want to call. Uh, here we have a sort of uh, a, 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 a pretty uh, comprehensive rendering of this sky. Uh, with more time and a little bit of refining, it can be made even more smooth. But for a demonstration, this, will, this I'm sure can suffice. And I have here, once again, I'm using my canvas as my palette. And I'm going to be mixing that really indescribable color of the water. Why it has turned that color is something that I probably would not even try to explain. And uh, I can't even give a name to it, except that it's a kind of an iridescent turquoise blue. Um, the, I have said some for, for such a very long time that I, I, do, I disapprove of using something called phthalo green. Well, uh, that, this is the exception. Perhaps the introduction of phthalo green, which is a lethal color, and I have already, I've castigated it for a long time, saying that it should only be used when doing flower paintings. But um, you can, in fact, when there is such a strange iridescence as this, you can maybe use the, only the slightest uh, drop of it. And here it is. Um, uh, to be used ex very, very sparingly, almost not at all. I'm barely putting any out on the canvas. And I'm going to show you what happens when I put a touch of this in the white. Uh, you can see that, the, uh, that the, um, the vibrancy of it is almost instantaneous. Let me see if I can get just a little bit more on there. Anybody who's used this phthalo blue will recognize it immediately as the, um, as the tone, the only kind of, this is a chemical tone, it's a chemical color, and you can't get it by mixing any other. It's what it is. It's a chemical composition. And I have a feeling that uh, it is probably the, uh, I'm not going to leave it in such a large quantity. I'm going to cut it very, very, uh, to, to a minimum. But um, uh, every once in a while when I have gone off about and, and ra rant and raved about phthalo green to not use it. I mean that not to use it in anything unless there is a special
special effect uh, that needs to be accomplished. And here, this very peculiar color of the water during this sunset is, uh, in my opinion, has called for the use of this color. So, so much for my uh, for my absolutely adamant uh, remarks about phthalo green. Let's see if it let's see if it is uh, in fact going to work to my advantage, or if it, or if I'm going to hate it. But there is that strange uh, uh, band of uh, of of this. Um, iridescent green there in the distance uh, caused by whatever atmospheric conditions there were at the time that this tape was made. Um, uh, I must uh, I must tell you that uh, Christmas will come and go and I will not be doing a Christmas show per se alive because it doesn't fall on the night that I'm going to be here and the night that I'm going to be here comes after Christmas but um, I'm going to prepare some kind of a Christmas show on tape for you and um, hopefully uh, the um, the new year will bring all kinds of uh, new and wonderful innovative uh, ideas with this cable easel of which I'm cooking up a few myself uh, I'm going to hopefully be able to bring you some uh, a phase of painting which has been uh, sort of put aside because we do not live in a mountainous area but I live in a mountainous area and there has been talk just sort of bantering back and forth that maybe taking a camera down to the mountains where I am and let's see and investigate what it means to do mountain paintings because there are programs on the uh, on the uh, air uh, that talk about uh, mountain paintings but one has never seen mountains like that no matter how you figure it. So maybe we will in fact try and put to rest once and for there's one on, on, on your screen that is that is a mountain painting that I did in Colorado that's Engineer Mountain and um, maybe uh, the Virginia Mountains are going to be uh, interesting maybe we can maybe we can do that as a um, as a project. Anyway we're now working our way down towards another band of color. This is a band of color painting no question about it it is um, one two three four bands of color but they have to be handled in a very special way. So I'm I'm uh, I'm mixing the uh, the base tone of this uh, sort of a amber uh, amber toned water. Uh, once again, why it's that way is um, is uh, not for me to even try to guess. But it is obviously the result of what the, res the water uh, reflects the sky and whatever is happening in the sky is being reflected in this water. So uh, if, if you look at the monitor very carefully, you will see that the this particular band it has got a base of the amber tones and then there is an overlay of the green playing on the surface. Um, I remember when I did a painting in Florida of, the, uh, of a sunrise, the water in fact turned uh, green uh, in very much the same way as this is. So um, obviously the, uh, the atmosphere uh, by the water, no matter what the body is, will turn the water into very interesting colors. I find that uh, the uh, oh here there's a there's a let, now let me let me pull this down here uh, and meet it so I can meet the um, meet the green with the amber and then put there's a streak of amber up running through here it's uh, it is uh, so it. it Observation is the only thing that um, nobody could ever memorize this. I would never have dreamed to be able to memorize the, uh, the oddity of this particular um, uh, uh, composition here and the particular color scheme. I'm picking some of this color up because I see that there is a streak running right through here like this. There it is, running through that water. Oops, let me pull that knob up. This is phone call. Good. Let me take the call. Hello there. Tell me who you are, please. Uh, this is Christine. Hi. Hi, I want to know what type of brushes you use. Oh, I'm using sable. And uh, what what type of canvas do you use? Uh, what did you say? What type of canvas? Oh, this is a canvas board. Oh, how long have you been painting for? How long have I been painting? Yeah. Uh, many, 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 many years. Oh, really? Yes. Um, what like what made you want to become a painter? What made me want to become one? Yeah. I couldn't imagine being anything else. <laughs> <laughs> how old are you? Sixteen. Oh, good. Are you going to be a painter? Um, no, I don't really, I don't really take art, but it, uh, my, my friend Randy likes art. Good. Well, I'm certainly glad you called. Anything else on your mind? Um, no, it's just thanks for, thanks for your information. Well, thanks for calling. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, um, uh, I, I always hesitate to say how many years I've been painting because I can't remember ever having done anything else. So I guess it's a uh, lifetime is the answer to that one. Uh, good. Uh, well, now here we are. Now we're working towards the foreground once again, and um, 
the turquoise has uh, has uh, reoccurred and the turquoise was a result of the uh, mixing up of this phthalo green with a touch of yellow and i think that um i think that uh, uh in my opinion, the, the green has got to be tempered um, and made to be less um, f fake. It's a fake color, but in a way, when I look at this composition, this uh, tape in front of me, there is a very peculiar fake quality to all of that color. And so, uh, so be it. Let's uh, just use it. Uh, so uh, while while I'm while I'm mixing up this this color, hoping that I can get it right, I'm going to take a break for a very very short time. So I'll be right back. back again that short break was um was to adjust something on my microphone apparently i was it was sort of being muffled and so uh it was so that you didn't miss any of my pearls of wisdom here um we're back now and uh going to continue with this study this remarkable study of a sunset over the atlantic ocean off uh, Heckscher State Park. Anybody who has been there knows that this park is there. Anybody who has been to the concerts and has picnicked there and has spent a summer afternoon knows that it is a magical place. And of course, uh, it is made even more magical with a scene such as this, which is a sunset. I have prepared all sorts of uh, uh, colors for this, for this um, composition here, which has a very interesting color variations. It is a pure study in color, but paying attention also to the fact that it is an event taking place. Uh, abstract painting sometimes uh, is, is merely um, the working and playing of color uh, with very little um, attention being paid to subject matter. This one is a combination of both of those. This is a color study as well as an event. And the event, of course, is, the, um, is a sunset over uh, a large body of water. Um, I have painted sunsets before, and they, not one of them, in my opinion, has ever been the same. Uh, good, let me take another call. Hello there, tell me who you are, please. Hello. 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 Yeah. Hi, this is, my name is Ron. I'm from uh, West Fayetteville. Hello, Ron. How you doing? Fine. And, uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you that I really enjoy, you know, watching your paintings at night whenever I get a chance because I'm a home improvement salesman and I'm always out on the uh, on the road. But when I get home, I try to get the channel on and, you know, try to watch it because, I, I mean, I think you really, uh, the stuff that you do is pretty amazing within the time that you have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> one thing I just wanted to uh, ask you is uh, I, I had told, I guess, one of the girls on the phone, I had come up with an idea about two years ago, and it's uh, kind of crazy, but I... I, uh, I moved into West Sable a couple of years ago, and since I had the train running by me constantly every, you know, every morning and every night, I came up with an idea as far as, um, actually, I, I made a board that mounts to the actual side of the, of the actual tracks. 
Did you? I, yeah, and what I do is I place the canvas on on the uh, the board, and I have these um, sort of like tubes that are adjust, that are adjustable onto like a like a hinge type of mechanism, and I can put whatever type colors of paints I want for an abstract abstract painting into the tubes. And uh, when the train goes by, uh, the wind from the train and everything else uh, along with it pretty much uh, creates an abstract painting. Like uh, it's it's incredible the colors and everything that mix together, and it's uh, it's just a pretty wild thing. I was just wanting to you know pretty much ask your opinion on that. <laughs> Ron, I love that idea. I okay. think it's hilarious, and I think you're innovative as you can be, and probably. You should contact some of the media to tell them what you're doing and let them get out there with a news camera and see what you've done. Because you could, in fact, say that you've got the train painting. Exactly. It's called train art, okay? And uh, <laughs> I pretty much, uh, like I said, I came up with it about two years ago. It was a crazy idea. And uh, what I can do is a lot of times I go into people's homes and I take up, uh, you know, a couple of different colors of what they want to use as far as, like, the basic colors and a couple of neutral colors. And whatever it does and then, you know, how it flies around as far as on the wind and the way the train produces it, uh, it always matches whatever decor they happen to, uh, to have for that, you know, particular room. And Ron, I, I think you are a national treasure. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate you know, that, there but... are so few original ideas in the world mm -hmm. that when you run into them, you you sit there with your mouth open. Yep. And uh, I would never, uh, in the wildest world, not think that that's a great idea, and I wish I could see some. Okay, well, I'll be glad to. Uh, I got a couple of them, like I said, hanging in my home. And uh, Well, you what know what you could do for me, Ron? What's if that? you wanted to, and if you're on the road, and on some Tuesday night, uh, you know, the last Tuesday of every month, just make a detour, come by the station, and drop in and show us. Okay, sounds good to me. I mean, be ready to be on camera, because um, we don't let people like you out of our sights for very long. Okay. Uh, good, I'm so glad you called, Ron. Okay, Pat, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, and like I said, I enjoy your work. I think you're great. Well, I uh, I enjoy what you're doing, and you're probably greater. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to take a look at them first, but they are kind of wild, I'll tell you that. Thank you, Ron, for calling, and I hope to see you here sometime. Okay, thanks, Pat. Good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, the world is full of a number of things. I'm sure that we should all be as happy as kings. I think Mr. What's his name said that? That British poet. It'll come to me in a minute. Anyway, Ron's got me some shook up with his wonderful idea. Now, way off there in the distance, I mean way off there, I mean not as far away as the sun, but there is a very mysterious thingamajig, and I believe that's the Cap Tree State Bridge, Cap Tree State Parkway Bridge, or whatever it's called. And it's off there, way off uh, uh, in, the, um, in the shrouded mists of the, uh, of the sunset, but it's going to go in right now before it gets too... I have to make sure that the color isn't too dark because then it would look like a cartoon. So I think that it is probably a mixture of this, um, of um, Van Dyke brown and some uh, ultramarine blue. And I believe that if I steady my hand, yeah, there it is, there it is. If I steady my hand on some sort of a stick, which is called a mall stick, and I'm going to use it to lean on here, I'll see if I can get that bridge. It goes clear across. I'm going to just sort of show a, a, a part of it. Um, it is way off there in the distance, and it and all of a sudden you see that telltale swell of the Cap Tree State Bridge. And anybody who has seen this at, uh, from their boat as they fish or as they clam will know that this is absolutely the most magical place in the world at this particular time. There is a, there is something about about this island that is uh, that's like being in love with the most beautiful person in the world because it brings up new uh, new scenes and new feelings every time you see this environment that we live in. And so let me just once again point out to you that all of these things are available to you uh, just right outside your door. You do not have to travel to other parts of the world. They're all right here. And if you happen to be interested in painting, you can uh, satisfy your urges to, uh, landscape painting with any, just about any part of this island is there ready for you to, for you to 
capture. Um, that's about all that I can see of that, but I do know that it has got some, I do know that it's got some suspension uh, uh, mechanisms here to hold this up, so I'm just going to kind of indicate them in case uh, the monitor uh, does not pick it up and in case the tape doesn't pick it up. I do know that that's the way that is, that is structured out there. But anyway, now let's get to the, um, let's get it, let's get to the part that makes this entire composition what it is, and namely the sunshine, th that sunshine. The tape is going to, of course, be rolled back because as this tape was being made, time was passing, and uh, the sun has a wonderful habit of, of um, uh, moving, or at least we think it's moving. It's exactly where it always is. We are moving, and I believe I know that. But anyway, um, uh, it, to, I want to get the sun in the position whereby it is above the horizon line and casting that remarkable uh, shadow. Uh, on the monitor, I think you can see that it is, in fact, brilliant yellow. And I'm hoping that my paint has settled uh, carefully enough so they won't pick up too much of the blue. I'm going to place it uh, now, that yellow, in my opinion, is not bright enough. It needs to be uh, uh, lightened. The uh, spectrum yellow, it needs to be lightened, so I'm mixing in uh, some, the, uh, some of the um, uh, 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 quick-drying white, and hopefully the color of the sky is dark enough to be able to make that, um, to make that uh, uh, luminescent. We're trying to get a luminescent quality to this. Naturally, the light of the sun uh, is not possible to duplicate in, in, in any other medium except light. But um, color selection would hel helps a great deal to give the illusion, because that's all we're dealing with here is illusion. Uh, the, sir, the, 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 um, the thing that is circling, the halo that is circling the sun is, in my opinion, from what I can judge here, a combination of orange and uh, uh, spectrum red. Um, and it is, it, it is surrounding the sun. Hopefully it will, it will give a, um, I, I will have to try and make it glow somewhat. Uh, the reason that sunset paintings uh, do not succeed is because to, to try to get the luminescence is the, is the, is the difficult part. But um, you try, because it's always, of course, uh, the things that are a challenge are the things that are the most intriguing to do. The, uh, the redness around the sun, I'm not quite sure I understand, but I'm painting what I see, and hopefully it will, it'll, um, it'll tell the story. The best that you can do is to hope that the illusion that you create is believed by the audience. Uh, this, is, this would not be possible with watercolor. You have to have the ability to blend these tones with oils, which is, uh, which is, the, way it, um, which is the only reason that I work on oils, because I'm interested in the blends. So, we have there something of a, let me see, did that work? Not really, I've got to get this yellow a little bit, a little bit rounder here. Good. Now, uh, there is a, uh, there is the, um, the reflection that is going to be running down towards the viewer from the, uh, from the sun. And uh, the, the, uh, the control room is going to uh, roll that tape backwards for me to be able to really try and get an accurate, uh, case on it. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be working in the foreground of this particular um, uh, uh, area where the water has now gotten some, some shading on it. Uh, the little rivulets are, are playing in the foreground. And they are, um, you understand that this kind of a painting is actually really uh, almost an abstract because you are abstracting essentials out of the composition. And I'm pulling this uh, uh, tone of uh, what might be the shadow of these waves in the foreground. Uh, and of course they move, therefore you would make them appear to move by giving them a sort of wiggle. Uh, yes, let me, let me talk to the next person. Hello there. Hi. Yeah. My name is Joanna. I'm from Port Washington. Hi, Joanna. Hi. Um, I'm a novice, and I was just wondering what style is that that, that you do? Uh, in I'm other words, it's different than Bob Ross or the other types of painters I see on TV. Oh, bless you for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely different. Um, is it... It's not abstract. No, it is not abstract. As a matter of fact, it is called realism, mm -hmm. but with an interpretive technique. 
Mm -hmm. uh, to give it a, to give it a label and a name is is rather difficult. I mean, uh, I don't think that it really ever works very well to give it a name, but I'm perfectly willing to try. But uh, the closest thing that I could come to it is that it is interpretive realism. And I guess that's probably the best way to d describe it. Do you show your work anywhere? And if you do, is it anywhere on Long Island? or No, it's not on Long Island. I live in Virginia, and I come up to do this program. And I have a gallery in Front Royal, Virginia. So and you are, you are the invitation extended as of now for you to come down any time you want to. Front Royal is in the northern part of Virginia. And, um, just God's down... country. Huh? God's country. Well, <laughs> I, I'm, I can tell you one thing. It's bear country. I saw a bear just yesterday in the mountains. Oh, uh, it must be beautiful. It is. It's quite wonderful, and the mountains are really, are really extraordinary. But uh, I like your question. I wish that I could come up with a better term. Uh, the terminology for it is what I think I said. Um, I want it to be recognizable, uh, but I also want it to have a flavor of my particular personality or me or whatever it is that I've invented in the way of style. Right. So uh, if, if, you have to give it, if you have to give it a name, I would suppose you would say that it's, it is interpretive realism. Well, I enjoy it very much and I wish you luck. Thank you and come when you can. I sure will. Good. Bye-bye. Thanks for calling and bye. Um, the observation that the shadows in this, uh, in these rivulets are that they are uh, a slightly deeper uh, amber tone than the water is, that is obviously being c colored by this uh, by the sunlight, and um, uh, the uh, the path of the reflection is going to be continuing, and I'll put that on as the extreme last part because I'm waiting for the paint to set. And we have a few, we have a little bit of time yet. All right, let me take another call. Hello there, tell me who you are, please. Good evening, Pat, my name is Carol, I'm from Lindenhurst. Uh, I, I think that it, if you either speak louder or maybe they could boost your voice here in the studio. All righty, um, is this loud enough? Can yes, this is great, thank you. All righty, um, I have, first of all, a point of information for you. Good. Um, you had done a painting, I believe you called it Study in Orange with a lantern and yes. some fall leaves. Yes. And there was a plant in it that you had used, a berry type of plant, that you didn't know what it was. Yes. And it, it's a bittersweet orange plant. Oh, good for you. Oh, I, I found that painting the other day and almost framed it to bring into the show. I'll bring it in next month. Oh, terrific. I really would love to see it finished. It had a sort of an orange candlestick, didn't it? Exactly, right, with the lantern. Yes. Oh, yes, I remember it. I almost, I almost met it to found the time to frame that. Oh, I can't wait to see it done. I did have a question for you, though, and it's about painting on canvas board. Yeah. I've heard two different things about it. One, that if you paint on canvas board, it has a tendency to draw the oils out of the paint more so than a canvas because of the backing to the canvas fabric uh, but you seem to paint exclusively on that so I must be misinformed as to... No, you're not. You're not misinformed. There, is, there are advantages to the canvas board, which I will be perfectly honest with you, is that they are inexpensive and they do the job for demonstrations. My fine oils which I sell as a professional painter to the public is done on stretched canvas and only on stretched canvas. I see. But for demonstration, this is perfectly acceptable. It is rigid, it has canvas, the texture of the canvas is there, and it is one-fifth the price of stretched canvas. I know that. Believe me, I know. <laughs> So, uh, so, uh, uh, and I say as often as I possibly can that these paintings that I do are demonstrations only. They uh, do not pretend to be uh, masterworks of any kind. They are pure demonstrations, and anybody who likes to acquire them or wants to acquire them under those conditions has to understand that canvas board is purely a demonstrational um, m material. I appreciate that, that differentiation. Uh, I also wanted to tell you that the difference between watching you and watching the other painters on the air is like the difference between watching uh, a finger painting class and a fine arts demonstration. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate this. Well, you know what? I traveled uh, 400 miles to get here, and it's worth every mile just to hear you say that. Well, thank you for everything, and you have a wonderful holiday. Thank you.
thank you so much, and you have a decent Christmas. Thank you so much. Well, not decent. I mean, a happy, merry Christmas. You can, you can be indecent, if you please. Well, that might make it merrier. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Thanks for calling. It was a pleasure speaking to you. And it was you. lovely of you to say all that. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, yes. Well, you know... As I say, it is worth it. It is. Um, it's. Uh, it's. It's more fun than I can possibly tell you to hear people say that. Not because um, uh, it's one-upmanship, but it's also because it's. It's why I do this. It's because there are many ways to do things, and this is. This is my way. The other people have their way, and that's okay too. Here is that amazing and wonderful and unbelievable reflection that happens in the water with the little water disturbances, the little wave disturbances on the top. Uh, playing around as this thing comes towards you in a sort of an ever-growing, larger um, pattern. And um, uh, I tell you, who can resist it? Uh, the, uh, the color selections are not easy. Uh, you can really mess this up terrifically. And um, the, the best that you can hope for is that you have captured something spontaneously that you may or may not find uh, appealing uh, when you see it again, or you may just say, okay, that was a failure, but I'm going to try it again. Uh, capturing something uh, such as ephemeral and as elusive as a sunrise and sunset or storm or rain or lightning is, of course, uh, what makes painters want to paint. And it is, all, of course, where you can fall into a terrible uh, uh, barrel of mistakes. Another call. Good. Let me have it. Hello there. Tell yes, me who you hi. are. Hello, Pat. Uh, my name is Roseanne Winding. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an artist. I used to do a lot of painting. And I love your work. Um, I, I'm so happy to see a show that's not a formula composition. I like this, the fact that you're painting from reality. And the reason why I'm calling you is you had a... Uh, you were talking about luminance, and I have done, had done some moonlight studies, and I had found that if you put a little bit, say if you want like a yellow to permeate the painting, if you mix a little tiny bit of that pigment to every color that you use, you'll achieve the, the effect that the light is permeating the entire canvas. Really? Try it on the next time, just a little, like in that purple you have, yeah. mix a little bit of it, it's ever so slight, it'll dull it a little bit, but you'll see that the colors will be pulled together and that light will actually glow. The next, the next one, try it, whatever, i say if you're doing moonlight, you want a silver light, you mix a little bit of silver, just the tiniest touch of silver paint into everything, even the shadow area. Really? And it'll, it'll, it'll glow. Really? Yeah, please try it. I will. One, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm... And I think that's the key, because I have done some, I did some studies. I, I wish I had the slides of, I don't have the painting anywhere. I actually did, in a window, in an apartment in Brooklyn, I painted a moonlight garden scene. And you honestly thought it was real. You thought you were looking through the panes of the glass. Well, good for you. And that's what I did, so try it. Well, of course I'll try it. I'm okay. not so arrogant. I love as your show. It's the, I'll tell you, it's the first time I've seen it, and I love it. Oh, boy, Johnny, come lately, you are. Well, I'm glad you made it, finally. And please call again. Try it and see, you know, see how you do. Sure. And also, I would, you know, uh, have you ever been to Babylon? Argyle Lake is a beautiful lake to paint. There's a lot of pretty things over here. Oh, yeah, I've been to Babylon, all right. My uh, sister you know, lives in Babylon. Okay. Yes. And uh, I'll be tuning in again and see how you're doing. Well, I sure well, hope know, so. Try it out. Try Thank you for out. calling. Okay, and bye And thanks now. for the tip. Okay, bye. Bye. Actually, I was going to tell her, but I can tell her now in, in, a, in a more oblique way, uh, a little bit uh, removed from her because she's off the phone now. But um, way back in the 15th century, uh, religious paintings were done, and uh, religious paintings always uh, found themselves in need to show a halo. Uh, halos around saints, and halos around the Virgin Mother, and halos around Jesus, and halos around the God, and all the, uh, all the other characters, the biblical and religious characters, and guess what? They used gold leaf. And um, those paintings are, of course, called from the Sienese school, S-I-E-N-N-E-S-E. -E -E. The Sienese people introduced gold leaf. 
uh, on their paintings for the luminescence that this gal was talking about, about putting some silver in the paint. And so uh, trying to achieve the luminescence by other means than just color is not unknown to uh, the painting world. Uh, of course, the uh, gold leaf is, um, I've used it, and it's great fun to stick gold leaf on things. It really is. You, you, you have to, it, it certainly changes the whole thing. And it would be fun to put gold leaf right on that, on that sun. Um, here, uh, so, so that was an interesting call, and um, I'm sure that she is absolutely right. She probably got the exact the effect that she was wanting. This is obviously some kind, and, and I've prepared the background for this. Now, whatever happens in the foreground um, is the, is just, I'm going to do it freehand because, um, well, because I, I can, and uh, because uh, you ought to, anybody who is painting ought to train themselves to, at one point or another, be interpretive and freehand with a lot of the painting. Uh, to, to the, the spontaneity is retained if you will work freehand. This is a, apparently uh, a, an old piling uh, that, has, um, that has, of course, uh, decided that it's uh, got very little life left in it, but it does wonderful things. It casts a nice reflection in the water, and that's one of the reasons that one paints these things, to, to be able to catch these reflections. Of course, now it looks like a dog with two ears, which I'll have to change immediately. Immediately, and uh, and um, if uh, if you uh, d if you don't see that that um, happening, uh, then somebody else will see it for you. You can be guaranteed that somebody's going to come along and say that looks like a dog with ears sticking up. Uh, there's always somebody who is going to do that to you, so be prepared for it. Here is this uh, mysterious and very uh, almost shapeless object in the foreground here, silhouetted against the water. It is. It could be uh, whatever it may be. Uh, it had better tell the story, uh, because if it doesn't, then somebody's going to say the dreaded, "What is that supposed to be?" Oh, good, another call. Hello there. Tell me who you are, please. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, my name is Nicole. Hello, Nicole. I was wondering what kind of oil paint you use in paint. Well, I use uh, I use paint uh, called Grumbacher. Oh. Is, is that what you wanted to know? Mm-hmm. It's a company that makes paint called Grumbacher. Oh, okay. Uh, did you understand that, Nicole? It's not acrylics, it's oils. Okay. Okay? I enjoy your painting. I'm sure glad you called me. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <sighs> I love those little tiny young voices, aren't they cute? Uh, anyway, here is the here is the um, trying to be as as uh, faithful to the uh, to the reference material as possible, even though it is a little incomprehensible and one, we're not quite sure. But that's what makes it mysterious. And I think that when you um, when you were to look, if you were to look at the um, at the masters and you see things in shadow, uh, one of the intriguing things is that you're not quite sure what you're looking at, but you believe that it's something, and then you then it's up to the viewer to guess. Okay, for the second time this program, we don't have to check the mic this time. This is a real break, not a checking break. So I'll be back in a very short time. So don't go too far.
A few more minutes left to this program, and then I'm off again to the mountains until next month. So if you want to sneak a phone call in, you better do it now. Uh, or just sit and watch, and hopefully I won't make a mess out of this project of painting the sunset. Uh, painting sunset, sunrises, moon, moonrises, and so on is a, is a fool's errand. You can never really duplicate the wonderful luminosity of these, um, of these events. However, uh, it, there's nothing lost if you don't try. And so, uh, this is the trial. I find that on the monitor, something equally as strange and wonderful has taken place, that the beach that we know is uh, pale colored sand when the sun is on it, when the sun is not on it, and the sun is going down, and you are sa your sand is left in uh, almost uh, complete shadow, it turns uh, to blue, or mauve, or another equally as, um, as incomprehensible a color. So I have here, I'm going to, try and, uh, going to try and see whether or not I can pull this off. I'm not infallible. Uh, sometimes I think I am, and then I'm pulled up by my bootstraps and uh, find out that I uh, can make as many mistakes as anybody else, only I do it in public, which either makes me uh, braver or more of a fool. But uh, nevertheless, if I make the mistake, I'm perfectly happy to sit here and see if I can't correct it. And uh, the, uh, the quality or color of the sand uh, being sort of purplish and dark is, um, is one of the intriguing things, I think, about these compositions, that you will take something like water that you know perfectly well in your, in your logical and um, aware mind is transparent. Water has no color whatsoever, except when you go and look at it uh, in front of you like this, it turns out to be not just uh, one color, but dozens of of colors. So if there's anything more mysterious than that, I don't know what it is. So transparent water and is uh, many colors and white sand is also a very dark color and can be almost as dark as night. So uh, once again, it proves that um, the world is dark were it not for the light which doesn't sound as profound, I think, as it probably is. And if you, uh, if you deal with light and dark in your thinking processes about painting, I think that you'll find a lot of the problems of painting uh, have been solved, because they are, in fact, nothing more than problems of light and dark. I got another phone call. Okay. Hello there. Let me take this call. Who are you, please? Hey, I'm Franz. Yes. And I'm, I'm wondering how much it would cost to set up to start oil painting as you do it. You mean in dollars? Yes. Ah. Well, uh, that's almost like, uh, it's almost like saying, uh, how much am I going to spend in the grocery store? Because it all depends upon how much you can do with and how much you can do without. Oh, I see. So um, there is a basic, uh, there is a sheet that I made out, uh, a list of things that you buy to start out with. But I would say roughly, without buying a palette and an expensive easel and, uh, you know, a whole bunch of brushes, you probably could set yourself up um, uh, modestly for somewhere around $30. Thirty dollars? Mm -hmm. I thought it would be a lot more like three hundred. It quarter. could be three hundred. Oh yeah. Because then you could get every color that is made. You could get it in enormous tubes like this, you know, great big pound oh, wow. tubes, or you could get it in smaller tubes that are come this size. Oh, I see. And then there are smaller tubes than this even. So, if you were to start out with a very small quantity of supplies, that means you'd do smaller pictures. I see. Right. A small house takes less material than a big one. Uh -huh. So. Uh, and working on canvas board, which is, uh, this board is probably $3 as opposed to 15 for a stretched canvas. So if that answers your question, great. Well, if it I doesn't, have, uh, ask me some more. Say. Huh? Well, I have one more thing to say. Good. Um, I really loved your uh, Halloween painting this year on Velvet. I watched that episode. And also I had, um, was the one that you did in, ma in your mask. The mask was phenomenal. I really... Oh, you really mean the laughing that. Halloween mask? Yeah. Oh, good. That was really phenomenal. Well, I'm so really, glad that you really came, that, that you, you called. Did a, a velvet, so. the, you like the velvet one? Well, I was really amazed that you did one. I, <laughs> I really don't like velvet, but I was Hi. really amazed you did one. Get, what's your name again? Franz, F-R-A-N-T-Z. 
Oh, Franz, Franz, uh, I gotta be honest with you. I hate velvet paintings. <laughs> Absolutely detest them. I think they are an aberration, but I did that almost as a, in a trial, an experiment, and some, somewhat of a joke. But also, I think the children will, will have some fun with the velvet. Oh, of course they will. The yeah. trouble is that velvet is $7 a yard. Yes. And uh, I'm not willing to do that again. I did that willingly as an experiment, but uh, enough is enough. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for bye calling, bye. Franz. He has the first name of one of my favorite composers in all the world ever, 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 Franz Schubert. And spend a spell, spelled his name the same way with a Z on the end. Anyway, I love the, the term that he used, uh, that it was a remarkable that I did a velvet painting. <laughs> and I thought it was also. I thought that it was not only an aberration, but also remarkable, as he says. Anyway, we have here a rather large area of some sort of a wonderful, deep, smoky purple. Is this a beach? Is it possible that this is a beach? Does it at all look like a beach? I think possibly I can... Prove that it's a beach. Okay, another call. Hello there. Tell me your name. Hi, Pat. Yes. My name is Vince. Vince. And I'm calling just to say how much I enjoy your work. Thank you. And uh, you're a Long Island institution that we should all be very proud of. <laughs> Thank you. I really mean that. It's uh, really something to see you work. You bring to life our landscape and show that there really is some beauty out there. Well, aren't you, aren't you wonderful to say that? Thank you so much. I, I find myself always saying, um, is anybody out there watching? And the next thing I know, phone calls come from you and France and all the people that called tonight, and I realize people are watching. I want to get one of your paintings someday. Fine, do it. We're going to have a, we're going to have a, we're going to have a sale of my paintings up here for some cause or another in the spring, and uh, we'll make announcements of it, and then you can probably acquire some. I look one. forward to it. Good. And I'll be looking forward to uh, your coming up and saying, I'm the guy that called and talked about uh, your being an institution. I will do that. <laughs> will you remember? I will remember. I have a memory that is almost <laughs> unfailing. Okay, Pat. Thanks for calling me. You're quite welcome. Have a great night. Thank you. Have a nice holiday. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Okay, we have here uh, another sort of a mysterious event, namely... This stuff on the beach, which is um, uh, a, a color which you would never find were the sun out, but the sun isn't out. The sun is going down. And whatever is left here in the foreground on the beach is, you can name it. It can be seaweed washed up on the shore, but the point is that it's very dark. It is silhouetted. It is incomprehensible. And this is where the term... Uh, abstract or from the abstract or interpretive painting comes in. This is where it is used to best advantage. When you interpret something which you really can't make out because there's either a lack of light or because it is so mysterious and so incomprehensible that you have to make it up or you have to interpret it and simply paint the impression. And that is more than likely how the word impressionism was born. You, uh, you give an impression of what you're looking at. The impression here is that there is something strewn on this beach, something dark and something not quite visible, but nevertheless there. And uh, that's why abstract painting uh, can be uh, actually one of the more intriguing phases of the art world. And uh, hopefully the human mind will not close itself totally to abstract painting and understand that this is what I'm doing here, even though it is realism. It also introduces the essence of abstract painting because who would ever think that a great purple blob like this with all this dark stuff in the foreground could ever be interpreted as a sandy area with seaweed and flotsam uh, washed up on the shore. So, uh, I philosophize maybe sometimes too much, but I also think that it's uh, nice for me to be able to bear my feelings and my thoughts in public uh, and to maybe hopefully uh, pass some of these feelings on in the process. Here is, um, here is a somewhat abstract study of a sunset over the Atlantic Ocean from uh, the south shore of this beautiful island. Uh, I'm glad you watched. I hope you got something out of it. I'll be live on the 27th of December again. In the meantime, I'm on, let's see, on Tuesdays at 8, Thursdays at 11, and Fridays at 9. So three times a week and once live during the month. Thanks again. This is me, Pat.